What is going on, everybody? American Thrills is back yet again to sponsor this episode of the Reminiscent Podcast. American Thrills is a punk rock band from Connecticut that recently released their debut self-titled EP on New School Records. This EP was engineered and mixed and mastered by some huge names in the industry, Make Do and Mend, Hate Breed, and Brand New, and Bayside. The EP is available now on all streaming services. Please go to our show notes to find their website where you can download and stream the album and where you can follow this band on social media. Thank you so much yet again to American Thrills for sponsoring this episode. More cars than... Um, oh, <laughs> dude. Hey, high energy. Because it's today is, today's... Um, <laughs> Our first ever real mailbag episode. A uh, real one, yeah. I think real, we mentioned real live mail. I think we mentioned last week in the post show that for years we did fake mailbags because no one was listening to the show, and it would just be you coming up with people's names and locations. There was always a liter- alliteration just to let everyone know <laughs> it was not a legitimate mailbag. But here we are with real people, real questions. And we're making here. podcast history. No <laughs> podcast has ever done a holiday mailbag. No other podcast has ever mentioned zigs and zags. Um, we're just cutting edge, cutting edge, trailblazing, stuff. blazing those trails, blazing, <laughs> blazing, trail, blazing. <laughs> um, this hike's going to have at least moderate difficulty. <laughs> But it is Christmas Day. Let's not forget that. Merry Christmas to all of those of you may, who <laughs> May your it. Yule logs be blazing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it might be a quick one. We're going to give a little behind the scenes of what we do every month for the Patreon. And we have some Maybe Christmas you're making cookies. Spe- <laughs> Maybe you're driving. Uh, but we're Maybe. here. We're t- going to take the questions. Some of you asked for the favorites of things. We we doubled up and and we're gonna answer that for our favorite and least favorite for the for when where that applies. Uh, but we're gonna have a little bit of fun. Wanted to put an episode out today just in case you needed it uh, for whatever you may be doing uh, on this December twenty fifth. You want to just dive in, Tom? Or let's just uh, dive in. Let's just dive in. Let's just do it. What is going on, everybody? I'm Tom and I'm Pat. We're best friends, and you're listening to The Reminiscent Podcast. To all of you reminisces, reminephews, and testing out a new one here, Remin Neighbors. I like it. (laughs) Yeah, it's friendly. It's a holiday. (laughs) It's an inclusive. Hello, my Remin Neighbors. Um, (laughs) Yeah, hey, who knows? Okay. (sighs) Let's just jump out of the gate here. KP. Uh, favorite gift you ever received? She says, quote, mine was a blue iPod Nano, Ugh. dot, dot, dot. KP. Without it, <laughs> a, a, a woman after Tom's own heart, uh, <laughs> without it, I don't think I would have the musical taste I do now. Interesting, because at that point, you were fully capable, or uh, it was mandatory to put your own music on there. You couldn't explore. But um, I will say, I had a four gig blue iPod Oh, I had the mini, not the nano. I had a mini with a little scroll click wheel, which was like mind blowing. Gotta love the click. But I bought it for myself for my birthday. So it was one of my favorite gifts I ever received, but it was not Christmas. So disqualified. Okay. Disqualified. (laughs) But there was something about getting your own, whether it was a Walkman or an an iPod and uh, having your own collection that you could explore as deeply and as intimately as you wanted to. I remember I didn't bother to write the song names in on a lot. So I would just know which track threes were good or track oh my sixes, God. you know what I mean? So <laughs> um, to have all the time in the world to explore. I feel that you you might know what I'm going to say for this answer because I talk about it quite a bit on the show. But best gift I've ever received easily, especially in the context of the show. My sister got me a binder full of CDs she burned uh, from her friend's CD collection. It's very thoughtful, very great. Postal Service, My Chemical Romance, White Stripes, All American Rejects, Taken Back Sunday, all in that binder. It was the. It was hard to top. I guess for obvious reasons. Uh, for for similar reasons why KP might have loved her blue iPod Nano. It was just this new. It was a ticket to a whole new thing. And uh, it, it, you know, it, it's something you. It's grown in over the years as to how much I got out of that single gift. So just tremendous. Just a really thoughtful, nice thing, and impacted my life a great deal. 
Nice. I think mine was similar, but with video games rather than music. I remember Christmas was always about going to my grandma's house in uh, Whitehall, which was like very, very. That would have been west of Erie out by the airport there. She had this beautiful white house, like the big pillars. And she always had went over the top, like very traditional Christmas, the red wreaths everywhere. And just really like when I think of Christmas, I think of like her house and we used to do all of my cousins were like very similar in age, young. So presents weren't really that expensive. So the whole family would come to my grandma's and they would just be like a massive pile of presents that seemed like they were up to the ceiling. And this was before I started growing my hair out and wearing like tighter clothes. So like, especially if you listen to like very, very early episodes of the podcast, which are, I believe only available on our website. If you really dig, I started to like, not really like Christmas as I became more of like a black sheep in the family. But when I was younger, it was amazing. It was incredible. And I still remember this video taken of me when I opened my favorite present of all time, a Sony PlayStation, the PS one, Nice. And I remember like, oh my God, it's a PlayStation. (laughs) And there was like so much emphasis on play. (laughs) Like there was a W in there or something. (laughs) And like the the pure joy on my face, because I never really had like a console of my own. I was always like borrowing, like going over to friends' houses and playing. And all of my friends were like into sports. So they never wanted to be inside playing games. They want to be outside playing football or whatever. I just want to be inside playing games. Now that I had my own console, I could do that all day if I wanted. And I remember like it came with a, a demo disc of like old of the PlayStation one games and playing, um, <sighs> Tomb Raider. There was one, I don't remember the game, but you were like this weird, like vampire bat thing. And you had to collect the letters narf. I have no recollection of what this game was, but it just opened my amazing. world. <laughs> it just like opened my world to like, I now have this thing of my own. I don't need it. Did you discover Zelda after this gift? Um, or that's not a been, Sony thing. I am not a gamer. Right, I'm sorry no. if that's like a, <laughs> if, I'm sorry if that's like a sin to even ask that question. No, no. I mean, it, it really opened my world for video games in general, which then led to later Christmases. I did get a Nintendo 64, which then, you know, I watched my brother play Ocarina of time all weekends um, but it all started with the PlayStation one. And I have so many fond memories of that console, those types of games. And I think the runner up for best, best Christmas gift would have been the next year when my grandma bought me this like 13 inch color TV. So not only did I have my own console, I now had my own TV so I could play them in my room and I would you like, never had to leave the room. I know I would stay up late. After my parents went to bed playing video games, I would set an alarm for like five in the morning on school night so I could play video games for an hour and then watch an hour of Pokemon before school. I was living Whoa. my best life. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> yeah. Before you read any of those uh, keys to success habits of highly successful people, you had a you had a nice little uh, <laughs> pattern for your day back then. There you go. Right. <laughs> uh, g- give me your worst. Let, let's switch gears. But worst gift ever. <sighs> two quick things um there was there was a couple years where those like t-shirts that had just like plain text very similar to what's available on our uh on our store but it was like this like it was either like the four panels with the stick figures or it was like these like attitude things and i remember my dad one year just bought me like three of these t-shirts that were like i'm awake and dressed what more do you want from me but my whole life i've always had (laughs) people Which is like, (laughs) right? Um, (laughs) Hell yes. That's amazing. But you you don't have the shirt still? No, I got rid of them. Well, here's the thing, Pat. I, up until I was like 16, I wore a size small. To this day at age 29, I'm a medium. Every, everyone tries to buy me size extra large shirts. Like, Last year uh, for Christmas, my father-in-law 
we were at REI together and I picked out a flannel. He was like, what do you want for Christmas? Just pick it out. And I got this flannel. It was a size medium. It fit me perfectly. I was wearing it. He saw it on me and he's like, that's too small. You need an extra large. I'm like, what the fuck? Why is everyone trying to convince me I'm an extra large? I'm like, goddamn medium. <laughs> it's my least favorite transaction amongst humans. It's like, hey, just pick it out. I'll, it'll happen. Or, hey, just give me your thing and blah, blah, blah. And then there's any <laughs> feedback at all on something that was supposed to be easy. It's like, look, man, I don't want to play this game if it's not you know, like I was, I was told that this was going to be a rather easy thing. Uh, if there's any feedback at all on this, I'm out, man. Like, no, this is, y- you are breaking the rules you yourself have created. And right. I just think that is the biggest crime you can, you can do to your fellow man. So I feel your pain on that one. So it was either these four t-shirts that were awfully dumb sayings in an extra large or <laughs> I'm dressed and I've had my coffee. What more do you want? <laughs> oh my God, dude. That is that is up there with um I love to to cook with wine. Sometimes I even put it in the food. There are certain <laughs> things that just tickle me so and I don't even know if it's ironic anymore. It's just yeah. like hell, yeah, dude. Yeah, I yeah, anyway. Uh so for me, uh one time my aunt um <laughs> uh going to my cousin's house, everyone's gathered, everyone's you know, we're all young grandkids at this point. My grandma grandma was there. My cousin got uh, a Ninja Turtle action figure set, ooh. which was at the time pretty, pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm like, ooh, okay. <laughs> let's turn. Let's turn up here. Let's get. Let's get it going. I received a homemade doll <laughs> from my aunt, which was life size at the time. It was the size of me. What? I think it was supposed to be me. <gasps> and um, in retrospect. There had been hours and hours of sweat equity put into this, like the most caring gift that the thinking was, hey, I love you so much that I made an, I made this. I didn't go buy a doll. I made a doll. But what ended up happening was that what was created was a doll that could easily be the main, I guess, player to a horror franchise. Like... <laughs> You know those movies that are based on dolls that turn on you in the middle of the night and things like that? That's what was created, unfortunately. So I want to be very clear about how much I now appreciate what went into it and the the labor and the thought and the love. I immediately threw it across the room and began crying and just- Really? Free. Oh, I I, I, I was like six or seven, I guess. So I was just like, what? First of all, the jarring sight of it, I think, scared me a bit. So I just threw it. And I'm looking at my cousin with the Ninja Turtles. I'm like, how did this even t- go down like this? You're all adults, man. How did anybody let this happen? Um, I feel awful telling that story. I don't tell it a lot, mostly because I love I love m- my family. My aunt is, you know, so helpful, so nice, so loving. And in retrospect, as an adult, you're allowed to appreciate, you know, Jesus the care that went in. But I think I think even now, the adults who were in the room at the time are able to be like. That one was an interesting. I think I think everyone would have loved to have that one back. I think. I've never heard that story, man. It was it was such it was just jarring for anyone within twenty feet of it happening. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't know what happened to it. I'm sure it's still haunting an antique mall out there somewhere, um, just ruining lives and its warpath uh, of uh, for revenge. Um, but it was it was it was it was quite the experience, and it's one of one of our best like family stories. I have to say, all the things. So it's embarrassing for me because I had an absolute absolute meltdown. Like I didn't even know how to handle what I was looking at, you know. But so embarrassing for me. I wish I would have handled that better. I wish I could have that one back. But um, yeah, oh, that that would go down as the worst present receiving experience I think ever. Oh my God, man. Your poor aunt. That's. I know. Yeah. The person who made the gift. I, can you imagine putting, like, making a thing and having that negative? Like, oh my God. I, I, I would love to have that one back. Um, <laughs> let's, let's move. Let's move right along. That, that first question came from KP. Uh, oh nice to explore God. that. Thanks, KP. This comes from JR Castro on Twitter. Thanks, JR. Uh, what's your favorite Christmas movie or special? So we'll go, we'll go favorite, least favorite. Wait, what's, um, what's the difference between a movie and a special? Is there one? I would say specials are more claymation-y or Garfield oh. or this and that. A movie is, uh, I don't know, Elf, for example. Just a, a straight oh, up 90-minute oh, production. Oh, oh, 
Okay. TV specials might be around 40 minutes in length. Maybe it was an episode of a TV. I okay. think there is a distinct special there. Okay. Um, but if you want to say my favorite special was this episode of a TV show, I think feel free. I, I mean, we're, oh, no one's going to jail here. Interesting. Okay. I hadn't thought about that. Hmm. Um, I think that's my interpretation. If you disagree, at underscore reminiscent FM on Twitter. Um, give me for movies or special first. No. Okay. No. I think we'll do specials for this one because I'm looking at the notes. We got, got a question about movies later on. So I'll just say what my favorite special is, and then we'll go into the movie stuff. My favorite special is Santa Claus is Coming to Town, if only because of the legendary character, Burger Meister, Meister Burger. <laughs> um, it is so weird. He, has this, he steals the toys away, and a local a red-haired kid who had grown up in the orphanage in that town um, essentially becomes Chris Kringle, which one of my favorite tweets this month I saw was like, I love that Santa's name is just Chris. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, this, the, the mayor of this town <laughs> hates yo-yos. He hates toys. He wants doom and gloom for the, you know, he's like, no toys. And anyway, Chris Kringle sneaks in and blah, 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 brings some color to the town. Um, but he is this like, I guess, Germanish, you know, Lederhosen, um, kind of ruler, ruler with an iron fist, uh, Burger Meister, Meister Burger. I love the name. I love his, I love his energy. Um, I, I have an ornament for my tree. Uh, that's my favorite special because it is rather zany. Gotta love the classics, Rudolph and all that stuff as well. But Santa Claus is coming to town for me, pound for pound. Gotta love it. Um, do you want to do movies now? No, I'll do one. I'll, well, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Favorite or least favorite, depending whatever sticks out to you. I remember watching Nestor, the long eared Christmas donkey. <laughs> I don't know why you'll hear later. My Christmas has been ruled by donkeys for years, but I think this might be a, a movie though. Um, but I, I don't okay. really like a lot of the old like claymation type stuff. It kind of freaks me out. Um, but it's, this, it's, it's wild. It's truly wild, but this might be one of the, uh, one of the ones that I do enjoy, I guess, or did as a kid. I haven't seen it since I was like six. So I don't really know. Okay. Well, let's jump into Jason Carey on Patreon. Similar question, um, but specifically favorite holiday movie and why, if you have one. Uh, thanks, Jason, and thanks to JR Castro for asking about movies and or specials. Um, I'll, I'll take this one first, if you don't mind. Uh, you you reference on the show a lot, our buddy Zach. You like to watch School of Rock before every show <laughs> uh, to kind of get in the mood, which, which is my favorite thing ever about you guys. Uh, he and I, his mom is the queen of filling every inch of the house with oh Christmas knickknacks. God. She goes all out. And it's not even in a way that is like for the visitor, it is a delight. You know, <laughs> it, there's nothing but like warm, welcoming energy coming from all the train sets, all the little villages. It's just great. So they have a glug party. They are like Scandinavian-ish in their family. They have G-L-O-G-G -G, glug. It's kind of like a port wine, brandy, cardamom, cinnamon stick, orange peel kind of thing that you cook over the stove it gets you rather toasty i think it's built <laughs> to get you through long winter nights um but it definitely warms your cheeks uh, that particular drink but i remember him and i watching a christmas vacation uh at least once after the part those types of parties we used to go you know when we were in high school we'd go uh, have a good time with his family and just kind of ha have a drink or two sneak one um eat some snacks and then by the time maybe sneak a few more and then try to watch Christmas Vacation a second time immediately after, but fall asleep at, before the credits were even done rolling. So fond, fond memories of just kind of knowing that's part of the tradition. And it's a very, I, I don't know, opinions about Chevy Chase overall aside, uh, height of his powers there. Great Christmas movie. Um, I like it a lot. All right. Um, nice. Yeah, Zach's family's home is always... In the motherfucking spirit. I'll tell you that much, yes. man. Every inch. Every inch. I got to say, one thing I really do want to do this year is watch Die Hard. I've never seen it. Everyone talks about, you know, Goofy is the best Christmas movie ever. I'm going to watch it this year. I think, though, Elf has to be one of my favorite Christmas movies. But um, the first Harry Potter is something that I watch every year around Christmas time. I I know it's not a Christmas movie, Whoa. but in my Play the club horns, totally man. Is. I think that qualifies as a hot take. <laughs> hey, friendos. I hope you're enjoying this AMA episode of the podcast. It's a brief glimpse into what we do every month for our Patreon supporters. And while we're here, let me shout out our Council of Elders, our Emo Elder contributors. We have Andre Provost, 
We've got Johnny Leftwich, Jason Carey, and Anonymous. Thank you all so much for signing up to the Emo Elder tier, and thank you to everybody else who is in our Patreon supporting the show. I want to shout out KP, our supporter Katie, who won this month's contribution of the Song of the Week monthly playlist. We need a better name for it. She gets to pick a song she's been loving lately to put into our monthly playlist on Apple Music and Spotify. If you'd like to check out the Patreon, you can head to patreon.com slash reminiscent and you can explore all of the post shows, the bonus episodes, the behind the scenes photos and videos, all the extra stuff we put on there. So one more time, I want to thank everyone who's contributing to the show. And of course, thank everyone just for being here. We love you all. Back to the show. If Die Hard is kind of an old take at this point, I think, yeah, toss Harry Potter one on there. Let, let's get into it. Why and how? And I'm very intrigued. Well, they, they've got the nice Christmas scenes, right? They're away from home for the first time. So they're like getting stuff from their parents. It feels very special. However, I do have the box set, all eight movies of Harry Potter. And the first one is just missing. So I might have to uh, go ahead and buy <laughs> buy it on Apple TV or something or iTunes. Um, but I will be watching the first Harry Potter. It's a very like sunsets at 2 p.m. kind of watch it earlier on in the day, but it feels like it's later kind of Christmas movie to me. That's kind of the the vibe I'm going for. Tons of snacks. Always one of my favorites. Nice. Yeah. And I think Elf, last week we talked about what did the 2000s give us? I think Elf is a legitimate classic Christmas movie at this oh, point. Oh, yeah. I think it's, it's be- widely beloved. So I think that's a good pick. Um, worst, least favorite. Let's flip it. I really don't like a Christmas story. You're a f- an idiot <laughs> i just don't think it's funny i don't know okay okay i think also there's a lot of it like my mom quoted it a lot in back when i was like 17 and 18 we didn't have a great relationship this is probably in the height of me hating christmas so hearing my mom quote it all the time made me just kind of resent it i think that might have more to do with it than anything however since then uh, i am becoming more of a sucker for christmas my mom my mom and i have a great relationship now so many things have changed maybe it's worth giving it another try no that's fine it's it's dry it's um i could see not liking it uh i can't find the words i think it's very nice i like it <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> and when I lived in Cleveland, Cleveland actually has the house where it was filmed. So oh, there, yeah. there's like a block in Cleveland where you can go tour the house. It's like old 40s, 50s era. Really? Um, it's like a cult classic. It's like a, it's like a little religion, I think, yeah. based around a yeah. Christmas story. People, people love it. I don't know if I love it as much as the people who love it love it, but it's interesting. <laughs> you know, I think it's supposed to technically take place in Indiana, but it was filmed in Cleveland type thing. But um, <laughs> nothing like a good work of humor being loved and people taking the time to read or watch or whatever, whatever the original work was. I, 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 I like it a lot. Right. Um, I don't have a worst holiday movie pick, but I'm here to defend the princess switch on Netflix <laughs> and the princess switch colon switched again. Okay. <laughs> Hear me out. Vanessa Hudgens in a body double movie. The first time oh. she is a baker from Chicago enters this pie baking competition or some baking competition. Very Hallmark movie. Netflix knows what they're doing with this. They're like, yeah, put <laughs> Vanessa Hudgens twice up there. It doesn't matter. They fly to this fake country where the princess there looks exactly like her. Chaos ensues. Gotta love it. <laughs> or maybe not, depending on who cares. I liked it. Princess Switch. What I'm here to, what I'm here to defend is the Princess Switch colon switched again. <laughs> For the sequel, they didn't just double down. They tripled down. There's Ooh. three Vanessa Hudgens. Oh my God. <laughs> There's like a weird cousin to the princess character who looks exactly like Vanessa Hutchins as well. They did not just lean into it. They broke the barrier <laughs> leaning into it so hard and tripled down for the sequel. Couldn't recommend for just like there the afternoon, maybe getting a little loose, having a beer, relaxing, kicking your shoes, your feet up or whatever. It's just like, it's like every Hallmark movie, the Hallmark channel only airs the Christmas stuff now. It's like they know what the lane is. You know what it is. You know what you're getting into. Uh, and I love the fact that they were just like, how about more Vanessa Hudgens just for the sequel? <laughs> it's like, yes, yes, yes. Um, wow. I, it's very shameless, but I, I'm here to defend it. It's fun. So if you're here to say those are the worst, I would say you're wrong. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Favorite. Uh, this is one that we scooped up from some of the past holiday ones. Um, I think this might have been also from Jason, actually, on Patreon, these next couple. Um, favorite, we're going to do favorite and least favorite Thanksgiving side dish. Hmm. If you have one, thanks again to Jason for submitting. 
Um, I thought mashed potatoes, but really it's just the gravy because <laughs> what, what are mashed potatoes except a vehicle for the gravy? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, very dutiful starch. Um, I would say later in life, I really just want the pie at this point. I want a pie in the house and I'm going to eat it the, the day after I'm going to eat it after the meal. And then later in the day as well. Also not just pumpkin anymore. I used to love the homemade pumpkin pie. Mm. Pennsylvania <laughs> the homemade pumpkin pie. Um, <laughs> but being around my wife, Jesse, who's from Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Arkansas region, pecan. Uh, oh yeah. Pecan has, has worked its way into my, uh, palate. Totally. So a nice pecan pie, pecan pie. Give me some of that. Very on board. Give it. Uh, so yeah. Hey, send for it, breakfast bro. the next day with your coffee. Send. <laughs> full send. Uh, so, but if that doesn't count as a side, yeah, give me the mashed potatoes. But to your point, Tom, it's really the gravy is the best side of a Thanksgiving <laughs> dish because you can pour it over the turkey. You're just, I like the stuff you can mix. So you get, I need the stuffing. I need the, the mashed potatoes and the turkey. It really elevates the dish, man. <laughs> I'm pu- I'm putting gravy on all three. Maybe put some on the vegetables. Make that something you can scoop into the trough of the trough being your mouth in this scenario. <laughs> anyway, I agree 100. percent uh, Give me your worst. Um, we'll say it on three. One, two, three. Cranberries, cranberries can suck my fucking dog. Me and my boys fucking hate cranberries. <laughs> Miss me with that shit. I don't even want to elaborate. Next question. Beatrice on Twitter. What? What's y'all's favorite Reliant K Christmas song if you have one? Oh, man. I love it because instead of asking us what our favorite Christmas song was, she knew that we both love the Reliant K Christmas album and said, let's yeah. just cut to the chase. What's your favorite <laughs> Reliant K Christmas song? I'll let you go first for this one. So Angels We Have Heard on High is my favorite off of the album. I begged for us to play that song at the Rudy's, which was our Christmas talent show at our high school. Uh, instead, we played All I Want for Christmas is You by My Chemical Romance which I was still hyped for, but Angels We Have Heard on High is very, very good. I like Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. I think it's stupid good. Um, We did a Scatterbrained episode a few years back where the decade would be poorly lacking 2000s-wise in terms of contributions to the Christmas rotation uh, without this record, I think. Um, Absolutely. Also, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas is such a nice... I just like any version of it, really, because... It's it's such a small ask, but a meaningful one. It's like, hey, I hope you're having a nice time. You know, it's like, why don't you settle in, have some pie? Well, you know, who cares? It's all good, man. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. It's not even having a very good Christmas. It's just a merry little one. Just have a little, have a little good day if you want. It's up to you. It's just a small, a nice, small, comforting ask in general, and and they absolutely destroy. Uh, I love it so much. Okay, um, this we're getting towards the end of the episode here. It's gonna be a little shorter one this week, we think, but. Adrian came in with a very with, with a good set of questions here to close <laughs> yeah. out this episode. Um, Adrian on Twitter, uh, worst Christmas song, best novelty Christmas song, name a celebrity whose Christmas album you would listen to if one were to be recorded. For the record, my answers are as follows: Wonderful Christmas Time by Sir Paul McCartney, Santa Claus is a Fat Bitch by the Insane Clown Posse, <laughs> and Sam Elliott. Uh, good stuff from Adrian as always. <laughs> I, I I hate to admit I've never heard Santa Claus is a fat bitch. <laughs> I, uh, but this this relationship with our with with you all has been a delightful uh, journey into. I'm glad you didn't put that on Tom's moving playlist. I think it would have kind of disrupted the flow a little bit. But uh, we'll have to do <laughs> good answers. You know, Tom would be the one to agree with you on any Beatles slander on this show. I, I like Wonderful <laughs> Christmas Time. Sue me, whatever. Sam Elliott, good, good uh, celebrity who does not have a Christmas album that sh- that maybe should. Who knows? <laughs> I, I, I can picture the twang. I like the Casey Musgraves Christmas album a ton, so I imagine Sam Elliott would have a lot of those steel guitar, slide guitar thing elements as well. Uh, that, I, I don't know if I'm typecasting because of his mustache, but whatever. <laughs> Worst Christmas song, Tom. Let, let's let's address the first question here. I really fucking hate Jingle Bell Rock. It doesn't rock at all. Not even well, a little. Uh, <laughs> hey, well, it rocks in the sense of like, hey, I think I got the next. Johnny be good, nice new sound here. Like in the sense that when guitars were invented, rock had to start somewhere. Well, to me, it's just like this weird thing where, first of all, any song that plays at a grocery store during the Christmas season is the worst Christmas song of all time. Nothing good ever plays in the grocery store. That's what I was trying to ask you last week. 
have you ever heard you'll shoot your eye out by follow boy at a grocery store? Oh. I think is what I was trying to ask last week. Like, is it in? Is it a classic? Is it no, in the rotation? No, no, no. Yeah, okay. I wish it was. I wish it was. So Jingle Ball Rock to me, first of all, it's a very like staccato kind of melody. And it's the kind of thing where like everyone sings it in unison. Like there's no harmonies. There's nothing interesting. It's just everyone singing that same declining melody the whole time. So you're mad at the producer. I'm mad at the songwriter. Every everyone oh, who touched everyone this song desecrated. <laughs> okay, I don't like Jingle Bell Rock. It doesn't rock at all. Is the note I'm reading in the doc? Pretty pretty direct. Good reasoning. Thesis pretty clear. Um, yeah. Give me "Underneath the Tree" by Kelly Clarkson. I don't know if that's eligible because I don't know if it's elbowed its way into the whole grocery store rotation. I'm just not on board, but mm. it seems to have worked its way in. I don't know why. Again, we've explored this in past Christmas episodes. The 2000s were pretty barren. I think even Paris Hilton oh. had a Christmas record. Or, oh, no, yeah. it was Jessica Simpson or whatever. Yeah. Like It was bleak. Yeah, she did. Yeah, so for me, I don't know if that deserves to be in the rotation. My brother likes it a lot. He would probably disagree, but I'm like, eh, I don't know. What about it <laughs> is so good. You know, so yeah, give me Underneath the Tree by Kelly Clarkson. I'm going to gatekeep on that one. I don't think, I don't think that one should be allowed in. Um, I don't even know if I'm using gatekeep right there. But anyway, uh, best novelty Christmas song. I'm going to jump right out and say, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. I love it. I think it's weird. I who's think it's it, fun. Who's it by? It doesn't disrupt my playlist. What's uh, that? Who's it by? No idea. I didn't look that part up. Oh. <laughs> okay. I think it's public domain probably at this point. So it's, I wrote it. No, um, I, I don't know. It's zany. It's fun. It's weird. I think that's why we last week talked about, or at least those are the reasons why I enjoy Don't Shoot Me Santa by the Killers. It's like, I don't want to be like, war is over. <laughs> I, like, I don't want that to be all of my Christmas songs. Give me some hippopotamuses. Give me some killers asking Santa not to shoot them. You know, you want to mix it up a little bit. All right. So again, my Christmas has been ruled by donkeys for ages somehow <laughs> put it put it on a t-shirt man my christmases have been ruled by donkeys so the same uncle that i watched nestor the lovable christmas donkey with or whatever they played a song called dominic the donkey and i was t i remember one night we were like i was making the bed with my wife at our old house and i was like have you ever heard the song dominic the christmas donkey and she was like bullshit that's not a real song and i started singing it for her and she was like laughing so hard like you're making like you're fucking with me you're making this up so i told um my amazon echo like play the song and somehow in my memory the song was even worse than i remembered it's a polka <laughs> and this, yeah dude that is some <laughs> pennsylvania dutch stuff there and it goes nice. jiggity jig e -aw, e -aw, it's dominic oh, the yes. donkey <laughs> jiggity yes, jig e -aw, yes, e -aw, yes, the yes, lovely yes, christmas yes, donkey yes. la 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 <laughs> very into it very into it and it's just like the memory now is of megan like on the bed like dying in laughter could not believe it was real um it's it only happened a year ago but it's now a really nice memory around christmas time. <laughs> hey there you go and that's all you need man that's all you need uh yeah best novel i like that i like that pick i love it you need, you're allowed to have fun allowed to be zany good stuff great pick um i wish i would have picked it stupid hippopotamus <laughs> um, just kidding okay so to address adrian's third question and to wrap up this episode like a nice uh, holiday present. Uh, name a celebrity whose Christmas album you would listen to if one were to be recorded. Uh, I'll let you go first, Tom. So I think a couple years ago, <laughs> DMX did a Christmas song. Where he's like, Ooh, that's the red nose reindeer. Blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and it was awesome. It was so good. Yeah, was he riding, uh, riding high off of the YouTube mashup where they put him into the uh, Reading Rainbow theme song? <laughs> I don't know, dude, but it seemed like he was genuinely having a great time. Like he wasn't nice. trying to like take the piss out of it. He was just honestly really having a lot of fun. I would like more of that. Sure. Also, I, my, my face lights up whenever I see Paul Rudd, I would yeah. love a Paul Rudd Christmas album. You know, interesting uh, that there would be a visual element to it. Cause I say a lot that I like the Casey Musgraves Christmas album, but the Amazon special I thought left a little to be desired, not a ton. I'm not here to hate too much, but 
Maybe, yeah, let's get Paul Rudd in front of a screen. Let him do a variety hour. I'd watch that. Come on, streaming yeah. services. Get on it. Get on it. <laughs> Even if he was the talky, I'm a celebrity's celebrity host, and I won't sing that much. I'll just bring talented people on to uh, do a little variety hour. Yeah, I'm, I'm fully on board with that. Uh, give me Russell Brand. Uh, if he recorded a Christmas album <laughs> as Aldous Snow or even a full band Infant Sorrow Christmas record, um, I would super listen to that. I think the songs in Get Him to the Greek are some of my favorite of those like quote unquote fictional hit tracks. I think we talk about that thing you do a lot and some of the tracks that are like in movies that actually kind of sla- uh, slap. I think you all, you all are actually Adrian, the asker of this question is definitely big on any and all of the bands in the Scott Pilgrim movie. Um, particularly the band fronted by Brie Larson and Scott Pilgrim, I think, is uh, <laughs> where he's going with that. But yeah, so give me give me Infant Sorrow's Christmas record if it's not already out there. I don't think it is. I tried to look it up a little bit yesterday, but um, I, I, I'd like that. Uh, my beans and mash, but like Christmassy or whatever, you know, furry walls being cozy around the Christmas Christmas time. Um, yeah, so I think that would be nice. And I think the holidays are nice, Tom, uh, which you are coming around. It sounds like you are uh, more and more a fan of of. Uh, I have a hunch you are coming around to the holidays, if only because of a very specific episode of Community, where uh, a Dan Harmon led writer room, writers room, hinted that it's a cold, dark period of the year, so why not try to light it up a little bit? And I have a feeling that's that that planted a seed in you, but I'm not sure. I can't be sure. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that it's like, especially when I'm working with um, with my therapist, is reframing. Right? I can rewrite my life. It doesn't need to be what my childhood revolved around. So like that memory of Megan falling on the bed in laughter in disbelief that Dominic the donkey is a real song or just like really realizing how much I love seeing someone's face when you give them a present. Uh, maybe not when they're getting you a life-size doll. Of yourself, that was, uh, that was, um, that was, uh, you know, I don't have an actual memory of it in my head. I think my brain wiped that. Clean. I, I just am aware of the facts and I know what happened. You know, there was a doll that was presented and what happened happened. You know, we can only say what was true about what the transaction was that took place. Um, yes. Anyway, yes, that's good. Uh, you're here now and in in, in you have a nice thing going. I visited your lovely home uh, not too long ago uh, to help you move. And I, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad uh, that you're feeling this way because you can make new memories. You can, uh, yeah, that's awesome. I'm actually, yeah. it warms, warms my... Uh, <laughs> I'm so broken by following Twitter so much and doing this pod. I was like, it warms my vibe. You know, that you are. <laughs> my mellow remains unharshed by uh, the vibe you're putting out with your, no, just kidding. Uh, that's nonsense. And we should stop this now. Uh, have a happy holidays, everybody. Song Merry of the week. Christmas Song of the week. Song of the week. Let's oh not forget it. Oh my God. Let's not forget okay. it. You, you go first. I got to look through my stuff. Uh, done with drugs by, or no, one more in the bill by the dirty nail. One more in the bill by the dirty nil, and it rhymes. That's, <laughs> That's good stuff. Uh, <laughs> give me thirsty and humble by PQ PQ PQ. Did I already do that? Uh, I I don't know. Uh, another 2019 song that was placed under our very helpful Tom moves across the country playlist. Hell yeah. Uh, but yeah, optimal lifestyles by. Yeah, I believe is the record. Pew, 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 pew. pew. <laughs> Alternative to 2019. Downloaded is what it is in my phone. Uh, thirsty and humble. Good nice. stuff. All right. Well, Merry Christmas to everyone. Happy holidays. Um, get to ready everybody for... in the Gami gang. <laughs> Just kidding. I scrolled past the Origami Angel song. I'm going to pick for my song of the week next week. So I was like, <laughs> Jeremy and uh, Gabby uh, on Twitter were like, hey, welcome to the Gami gang. I'm like, don't know what that is, but that sounds amazing. I'd love <laughs> to be a part of that. <laughs> All right, on to the post show. We love you all. Have a great day. Yeah, I think we're going to work through our plans for January. Back to normal. This is the most unstructured we've been in a while doing both episode 200 and this episode, but hopefully it was fun. Yeah. Back to regularly scheduled programming. Uh, if there's something you want to hear, as always, at underscore Reminiscent FM on Twitter. Love you, everybody. Right. Love you, Tom. Love you all. Love you too, man. See you. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this Christmas AMA episode of the podcast. You can find the show notes at reminiscentpodcast.com slash episode slash 203. And please hit us up on Twitter at underscore reminiscent FM. What is your best and worst Christmas present you have ever received? Please stick around for just a couple more minutes to listen to the new song by American Thrills. And please check them out in the show notes as well. Happy holidays, everyone. We love you all so much. We'll talk to you next week on New Year's Day. Bye, everyone.
Your heels on the dashboard to all of 